I'm baffled by John Piper, an alleged humble, fervent, dedicated Bible teacher that can be indifferent to a million abortions a year, 100,000 kids on hormone blockers, a wide open border, the destruction of Western society, race hatred, defunding the police, rising crime, the downfall of Minneapolis' hometown, and him preaching about Donald Trump's personality. It's on you, John Piper, to explain yourself, not us. Stop telling me you're a Christian all the time. Start acting and voting like you are a Christian. Charlie Kirk slammed John Piper just last month about a statement that John Piper put out about Donald Trump. Now, we're going to let this play out, and at the end, I'm going to give four key mistakes I think Charlie Kirk made in this video. Let's dive in. Um, you'd mentioned this statement. You cannot be a true born-again Christian and vote Democrat. Do you still stand by that statement? Yes. Okay. Are you familiar with the notable conservative evangelical Christian John Piper? Oh yeah. Okay. Are you familiar? <laughs> so, yeah. Are you familiar with his uh, article he came out with November 2020, right before the election, on yeah, it was policies, persons, and paths? Around. Effectively, can't vote for Trump, can't vote for Biden. It was like a, a middle ground, if I'm not mistaken, right? Yeah, yeah, in a, in a I, sense. His deal's Irresistible Grace. That's his blog or something, right? Um, Des Desiring been, God is his well-known okay, blog and channel. Yeah, yeah, you're good. No problem. But he's a very well-respected theologian, yes. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So I, I was just going to maybe mention a quick little blurb of what he said and then maybe ask how you would kind of respond to that, if that's okay. And so in the article, um, he said, okay. So we think that um, policies that endorse baby killing, sex switching, and freedom limiting, and socialistic overreach are viewed as deadly. And they are, indeed. I completely agree 100%. All those things are completely evil. He said, however, um, I remain baffled that so many Christians, of which, of course, many in this room are, consider the sins of unrepentant sexual immorality. Of course, we're talking about a specific someone here. Unrepentant boastfulness, unrepentant vulgarity, unrepentant factiousness, and the like to not only be toxic to our nation, and so he ends by saying this. In fact, I think it is a drastic mistake to think that the deadly influences of a leader come not only through his policies, but also through his, and not only, excuse me, the deadly influences of a leader come only through his policies and not also through his person. Yes. And so, so all of us are going to be faced with a decision here in seven months or so when we go to the polls in November. And so my question for you is, you know, as, as, as I'm talking specifically for those who claim to be born again, sincere, authentic Christians. And I'm asking you, how can you illegitimize the faith of a sincere, Bible-believing, prayerful, submitted to the word of God Christian who simply determines that a man who engages in blatant and unrepentant sin should not lead our country? So how can you illeg well, illegitimize that? Did answer? John Piper say he was voting for Joe Biden, though? He said that this article is the closest thing that you can get to to determine what I'm voting. He didn't say specifically okay, who he's going to Okay, so that's different. For. So my yeah. statement was the following. You cannot say you believe in biblical principles and vote for the principles of the Democrat Party. They're incongruent. They do not fit. And that's not what – I'll, I'll address I John Piper. I agree with you. No, I know you agree. So I, I'm going to address the John Piper thing because I disagree with what he said. But my position is this. If you're a born-again Christian, by the fruit you will know them. And if the fruit is that I will cast my ballot for a party that had Gretchen Whitmer and Gavin Newsom and Eric Adams and Joe Biden spend more wording and video time on Easter Sunday talking about trans rights than the resurrection of our Lord and Savior that supports the massacring of children by a trans and also abortion, that you cannot be a Christian and vote for that. Now, John Piper did not say he was voting Democrat. So I, he doesn't even fall into what I'm, I'm talking about. So let's talk about John Piper. What John Piper is saying is that I believe abortion is wrong. Okay. I believe that the transing of kids is wrong. I believe all this sort of stuff. But I think Donald Trump is this unrepentant sinner. And I would say, John, Mr. Piper, what do you have to do with the story of Samson? Should he be in the hall of faith in Hebrews? According to our own scriptures, it says that Samson is in the righteous hall of faith. You know the story about Samson? He's sort of similar to Trump, the hair. <laughs> God came to Samson while he was in the bed with a prostitute. Samson took the jaw of a donkey and killed 400 Philistines. He wasn't exactly your perfect mold, but God used him for a purpose. And I would ask John Piper, can God use broken, sinful vessels for his purpose? He used King Cyrus to bring God's chosen people after the first exile for the reconstruction of the second temple. 
And the question for John Piper, he says, I remain baffled. Well, you shouldn't remain baffled, Mr. Piper, because the people that are Trump supporters that are Christians, they know Donald Trump's faults. They could recite them back to you, just like they know their own faults. But he also has virtues. And I never hear the virtues ever articulated from people like John Piper. What are the virtues? He's awfully courageous. Would you keep on fighting if you're facing 700 years in federal prison time and your family's business empire is at risk of being taken from you? Would you keep on running for office and keep on fighting if everything you've done is in front of you? I don't know if I would. Secondly, his love of country, I think, is unparalleled, unprecedented. Finally, he was conflating a policy agenda with personality. He says a president is not only personality or policy, but it's also personality. But policy is far more important than personality. I'll prove it to you. If you turn off your TV and you tune out of all the media, will you still be impacted by the president? Yes, by his policy. And so the question for John Piper is, you're watching way too much mainstream media. You're being infected way too much about a man that I don't think you even know. But can you acknowledge that Donald Trump delivered three Supreme Court justices and gave us the overturn of Roe versus Wade? If we voted the way that John Piper wanted, us, or let's just say embrace that belief system in 2016, we would have had Jesse, I mean, uh, Hillary Clinton um, as president, and we never would have repealed Roe versus Wade. The embassy would not have been moved to Jerusalem. We wouldn't have had peace in the Middle East. I could go on. I think we proved that the tr first Trump presidency, flawed man, excellent policy, fulfilling his promises. I don't think any Trump supporter you know, is, is necessarily in disagreement with what I would have said. I'm baffled by John Piper, an alleged humble, fervent, dedicated Bible teacher that can be indifferent to a million abortions a year, 100,000 kids on hormone blockers, a wide open border, the destruction of Western society, race hatred, defunding the police, rising crime, the downfall of Minneapolis' hometown, and him preaching about Donald Trump's personality. It's on you, John Piper, to explain yourself, not us. Go ahead, really quick. Yeah, you're good. Again, John Piper would obviously stand against those things categorically. But he's not voting. Categorically and unequivocally. But if you don't and, vote and against John, it. And John Piper wouldn't be the only one who would take this sort of stance. I mean, if you're going to oppose John Piper as a notable conservative. Well, I can listen. Andy Stanley, Russell Moore, John Piper, Rick Warren, Timothy Keller, who's now passed away. If they're, David Platt, we could continue to Yeah, but on why on. won't so, they so, vote so, to end abortion? Period. End of story. If you will not vote to end abortion, stop telling me you're a Christian all the time. Start acting and voting like you are a Christian. I think they're just saying that we, we, we can't have unconditional support of an individual Hold simply on. because it's, of his party. We have film. unconditional support the, of biblical principles that a flawed vessel fought for and achieved. So Russell Moore, David French, all these guys that go around and talk about how terrible the Christian right is, how can they reconcile? Because they're going to have to go in front of a supreme ruler of the world, Jesus Christ, and says, why were you preaching in the New York Times and writing these long, meandering op-eds about how you didn't like Donald Trump's tone when you were given a binary choice, babies saved, babies murdered? And they're like, well, uh, I don't like his tone. What kind of a Christian is that? He didn't, he didn't mention tone. He mentioned unrepentant sin of five different categories, all of which are mentioned explicitly in the New Testament. Okay. If I was an Israelite in the time of the Old Testament, I would not have advocated for Samson as leader. He was not a commendable leader. I would not no, sit here and Why campaign. is he in the Hall of Faith? I would, I would God not, thought he was a great leader. Thank goodness here. you're not the not judge of men. I would not sit here and com campaign for Samson to be judged. God yeah, put you know, you know what I mean? Samson in Hebrews. You, know I mean? you didn't. You know I mean? So did you put Jephthah too? And Jephthah was a child sacrifice. Yes, yeah, so maybe on, we can so learn from the flawed vessels of the Old Testament not try to apply the perfect interpretation of the law. You're making my point. So th it's not even a choice is what I'm getting at. If you believe in the biblical principles, if you believe in what the Bible says to love life, to love the unborn, to care about those that can't defend themselves, it's a binary choice. And it's not, it's not about the defending the unrepentant alleged behavior of an individual. It's did that individual advance the priorities that we care about. And the answer resoundingly was yes. Yes, and I would agree. Yes, so you should vote Trump. That's not the is it, Do we really think that's the end, though? I mean, to, to think, I think it's a biblical principle, Charlie, and hopefully you would agree that it's not only policies that a leader advocates for that impact the nation. You're right. It's, it's also Supreme Court the, justices. The, yes, and it's the character of an individual. Okay, well, hold I on. I could go through Scripture. Have you ever met Donald Trump? To advocate this. No, I have not. Okay, personally. so, but hold on. I think this is super important because... 
absent meeting an individual, you don't know who he truly is. But let's say he's all those terrible things. I'm a sinner. Trump's a sinner. Trump has done more to fight for the priorities that I care about. And I believe that every Christian should pray deeply and act to defend the unborn this November. Thank you so much. We'll get to the next question. Thank you. We got a simple question with it. Do you think Jesus of Nazareth, first century, who you and I both follow, do you think he would agree with your statement that no born-again Christian would be I think Jesus of Nazareth would have handled Trump like he did in John 8. He would have said, do not cast a stone against Donald Trump. He would have said, Trump. Sin no more. You know what he would have said to Charlie Kirk? He would have said, don't throw a stone at Charlie Kirk. Charlie, sin no more. Because we all fall short of the glory of God. And God uses all of us as broken vessels for his purposes. All of us. Now, there's a lot that Charlie Kirk said which I agree with, but I think he's made some serious mistakes. Now, cards on the table. If I was an American citizen, I would vote for Donald Trump. I'd much rather see his policies play out than I would see democratic policies play out. And over the previous elections, one thing the left did really well is they made it seem as if Donald Trump was the only one who had moral issues and as though his opponents were moral examples. So in previous elections, there wasn't as much scrutiny, especially from a lot of Christians, about the Democrats' moral failures and unrepentance as there was on Donald Trump's. But I still think to say that as a Christian, you must vote for Donald Trump and to say that John Piper is being indifferent about biblical issues, Charlie Kirk has really missed the mark. Firstly, he said that a born again Christian cannot vote Democrat because Democrat policies are evil. And by implication, you'd be supporting evil. But then he talks about God using Samson and Samson being an evil man that God used and Donald Trump being an evil man that God uses. So Charlie Kirk is happy to extend grace when it's towards Donald Trump but not to extend that same grace when it's towards a Christian who might potentially vote Democrat or isn't as fervent in supporting Donald Trump as he is. Whenever people say things like, a born again Christian can't insert whatever sin, it always makes me question whether you really understand the gospel because to be born again means that you've turned away from your sin, turned to Christ and that he has transformed you. But it doesn't mean that you'll always make the right decision. Now, there are some Christians who maybe see the Democrat party talking about things like universal health care or helping the marginalized and helping the poor. And maybe from their perspective, that seems like what a Christian ought to do. Now, I think they'd be wrong in how they understood it. But for me to say that they can't be a born again Christian shows that there's a problem with my understanding of the gospel. Secondly, Charlie Kirk accused John Piper and people like him of being indifferent if you're not actively voting for the Republican Party. So let's say someone who preaches about abortion several times, someone who's adopted children, as John Piper has, and someone who potentially has supported pro-life causes through their church is indifferent to abortion because they're not putting their vote in the Donald Trump ballot. So Paul says in 1 Timothy 2 that we should pray for kings and leaders so that we can live a peaceful and quiet life. Now, Paul is writing to people who do not live in a democracy. And I'd imagine if Paul was writing to believers today, he would also encourage us to participate in voting. And I'd imagine he'd give us a lot more principles for how we do that. However, it's important to remember that voting is not the only way to bring God's kingdom to earth. Voting is not the only way to advocate for biblical morality in the world. And in fact, the principal way is for us to spread the gospel, to disciple our families, to be committed in our churches and through and as a body of Christ, go out and bless our neighbours. Because guess what? God's kingdom is not of this world. Now, listen, if you love God with all your heart, all your soul, all your strength, all your mind and love your neighbour as yourself, I don't think if you stand before God on judgment day, he's going to look at you and question, why did you not cast votes? Why did you not vote more often? If you trust in Jesus, he would say to you, well done, my good and faithful servant. Now, the third problem is the straw manning. Charlie Kirk says a vote for Donald Trump is a vote to end abortion and to advocate for biblical morality. But Donald Trump is not pledging to end abortion. Yes, he may be giving more power to the states, but he's not outright said, I'm going to end abortion. He's not committed to that. He's not committed to banning same-sex marriage. He's not committed to banning trans ideology completely. He's not committed to ending these things. Now, some people might say he can't promise to end these things because if he does, he won't win. But then that tells me that you'd be more willing to compromise in order to please man than have faith in God that he can give a landslide victory by pledging to go all the way. Now, you might be a libertarian who thinks that actually, even though this thing is wrong, we shouldn't require the state to impose it. We should allow people to experience the consequences of their actions themselves. So you might have different views on what government intervention should look like. But let's not act as if a vote for Donald Trump is a vote to see a Christian theocracy in the United States. And number four, Charlie Kirk says, if God used Samson, can't he use Donald Trump? 
But by that logic, God could use Kamala Harris. <laughs> by that logic, God could have used Joe Biden. Yes, God can use anyone. God used a donkey in the Bible. It doesn't mean you'd have to cast your vote for a donkey if it was on the ballot. The fact is the Bible does not say Christians have to vote. So it's an area that Christians can exercise their liberty and prayerfully seek what the best thing to do is. But to then cast judgment on other people because they don't vote the way that you do shows a pharisaical spirit that we must avoid. Now, if you're an American, I encourage you to vote Republican if you do vote. But most importantly, be devoted to Christ and understand this. Before Jesus Christ died and rose again and ascended to the right hand of the Father, he said that he will build his, not political party, not country, but build his church and the gates of hell will never prevail against him. Now, if you want to see another video, check out this one. I know it will bless you. I'll see you there. Peace and blessings.